Did you know that rocket mass heaters are one of the most efficient wood burning stoves out there? We've already created multiple rocket mass heater designs and they've all proven the efficiency and the effectiveness of the rocket mass heater design itself. But one of the most efficient designs out there is the rocket mass heater bench. And while most designs have the ducting that comes from the stove that runs through the bench, most people actually don't even know about the design that we're creating, which is called the stratification chamber. What's going on everyone? I'm Brant. Ever since I had discovered the concept of rocket mass heaters, I'd been hooked and fired up. <laughs> and starting the discovery of the concept as well as the design of the rocket stove, we had already built two previous rocket stoves, both that were different in design. Now we've actually built our third version of the rocket mass heater bench. And this version is called the stratification chamber. And for those that don't understand the concept, it's really just a tubeless bench where we're letting the hotter gases into the bench and allowing them to cool and the heat to be absorbed into the bench. And as the cool air settles, we have the J-tube in this system that's drawing the cooler air and then also a siphoning effect because the barrel that's from the original burn system is sitting close to the exhaust pipe. So we're creating a thermo siphon, you could say. But a key aspect is that it's flexible in the design, which makes it that much more beginner friendly and makes it that much more unique in the creative artistic way that we can design these systems. Once we understand the concept, the measurements that we need and the dynamics of the heat. But we've used a lot of natural materials on the land. We've used a small bit of Portland in our soil mix, essentially creating a soil creep mix. And then we have these big pockets of lava rock, which is very porous, lots of holes in it kind of rock that'll act as insulative material as well as a bit of thermal mass. And that's another key aspect of this rocket mass heater is the thermal mass and the absorption of as much of the heat as we can get out of the fire. Which you'll find our rocket mass heater, the initial burn area is a J-tube in itself that flows from the top of this tube that looks like a little chimney in through the tunnel and then up and hits the top of the barrel. And that's where the barrel is actually releasing a good majority of the heat from the fire initially. And then that quote unquote cooler air is traveling downwards and through the other pipe that comes into the stratification bench. And that's where any remaining heat is allowed to absorb into the rest of the bench and settle down and then be sucked out of the exhaust. So just in this area in general, we have a lot of heat absorption, not only from the gabion baskets, but the floor underneath with all of the stone, gravel, and the rock and adobe and everything. So we have a lot of mass, a lot of capacity for holding heat. So we've shown in the previous video that you can watch in the link above and in the description, but we've already shown the initial buildup of the rocket stove and Nika has done a fantastic job of building all this up and shaping it and getting all the tubes and everything right. I mean, this is gonna be awesome to light up. And so that's where we left off on the previous episode was finishing this and actually getting to how we were making the bench or the bell part of the bench.
since Nika was able to cap off the end of the bench, we have it all sealed off and we should be able to start firing it up. So I'm actually gonna go out and gather some sticks and let's get this thing going. It's the advantage we have with this old growth desert forest of pretty much all juniper trees, but we have the abundance of wood on the property, especially with the rocket mass heater itself. The way that we've designed our stove, it only really will take skinny little sticks and we have the abundance of all that, especially all of the dead branches that are on all of these trees around here. And that in turn means that we're helping to clean up the trees, we're cleaning up the brush, and then we'll end up starting to trim up a lot of these trees to make them look a little bit nicer, but then we'll get the chop and drop process started on the land. And that in turn puts more organic material into this sandy soil that we've got around here. Gathered our sticks. We've ripped up some cardboard, so I'll show you how we get our rocket stove started. We'll show you why we have this little door, because it's not only for ash catch, but it's also for just making it a bit easier for starting the fire. So then we don't have to reach our arm all up in here and try and shove the flaming ball of cardboard in it. super important to get the middle tube or the tube that's inside of the barrel heated up adequately because otherwise there's still going to be kind of this cold draft that is ultimately pulling the hot air inside and because probably everything's still a little wet we just have this all finished up so there's still some wetness to the whole system and that definitely will contribute to things just not working properly and so just proper dry time but otherwise everything is working we've got the cardboard going and everything is cycling through and the tube inside of here is actually getting pretty warm that's kind of the experiment with these systems sometimes is we just got to fine tune everything and make sure that we're just kind of doing the steps to make sure we don't smoke ourselves out in here rocket stoves are a little bit different than conventional stoves in the sense that when we're putting the wood in, you can see we're just putting in these tiny little sticks, you know, not much bigger than my thumb. But the key feature of the rocket stove is that it likes to be stuffed full. So we're kind of restricting the airflow, but we're getting more concentrated, kind of faster airflow, kind of just for optimal performance. And then also so you don't have to babysit it. The fire going for a little bit at least. Now we can check the temperature with their handy dandy laser. This is where the tube is coming down and flowing into the bench. And we can see that that's cooking at 364, 376. Yeah, that's cooking in there. Then we'll go to the top. The top where 450 will come to the bench where the pipe is coming into the bench at 83. A little bit closer to the pipe, 90 degrees right on top of the pipe 100 degrees so this is where the pipe is going you can kind of see the laser and then even at the end towards the end of the bench 80 degrees and before i forget let's check the exhaust pipe 108 degrees 107 that's a lot of heat transferred which actually equates out to almost 80 percent heat extraction Pretty dang efficient in my book. So we can come to the back of the pipe here next to the barrel. We got 158. So the heat coming off the back of the barrel, which is close to 300 degrees, is helping to create the siphon effect on our exhaust tube here. Got heat traveling down the bench and heat being absorbed by the bench. We'll go outside and check. Looks like we've got a proven concept here. You can see our exhaust pipe that sits just above our roof, but you can see how minimal 
smoke or anything that's really even coming out of the exhaust. Not to mention that we've drastically reduced the temperature down from 500 or a little over 500 degrees down to under 100 degrees coming out of the exhaust. So we've been able to efficiently extract a whole bunch of heat from that rocket stove and contain it inside the Gabion. And then with the Gabion, all of the thermal mass walls, everything is gonna be absorbing. So we'll be retaining that much more heat inside. Now that we've warmed everything up inside, since I'm outside, let me show you. Came in and you're looking like a sign of grace. I know, but I can never match your name or face my fault. I didn't notice it was out of place. You pain and fairy tales on the wall. Call into the better of the half of me, please show me just a little bit of honesty. I hope I got a heart that I can salvage, but it's getting harder.